Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about controlling your emotions and how to do that and how I learned to control my emotions by studying one of history's greatest narcissists and greatest diabolical people in, well, in history. And that is by studying Hitler's Mein Kampf, which is translated to my struggle. I understand a lot of people may not like that, you know, we, we need to study this darkness and these concepts of darkness and in order to understand how to control our emotions. But the thing is, is a lot of this stuff isn't taught in school. And I went to school, I, I went and got my bachelor's degree from a university. Of course, I wasn't at the most prestigious or elite universities, but I went to get my education and I did not receive anything like what I've received by just reading the books themselves. And so I thought that given the audience that I have and the kinds of issues that we're all healing, I think it would be best to understand how this darkness really plays out and really what goes on in the minds of these kinds of people that are very narcissistic and I, I think the only way to do that is by looking at some of the worst of the worst. And so take this all with a grain of salt and take this all with a understanding that this is for education. This is for understanding how, how these people play these games. And so first I want to start out with a quote here uh, at the end of the book. It's um, it's talking about recognizing the strength of a country. And he, Hitler says, To recognize the strength of a nation lies primarily not in its weapons, but in its will, and that, before foreign enemies are conquered, the enemy within must be annihilated. Otherwise, God help us if victory does not reward our arms on the very first day. So what he's saying here is that I mean, this is very narcissistic, of course. You have to literally break the will of the other person before they can, before the fight even happens. I mean, you see even Mike Tyson talk about this in his fights. And I'm not saying Mike Tyson is a narcissist, but he was a pretty savage and brutal fighter, anybody that's seen his fights. And so before he even gets in there, like to the actual fight, he wants to make sure that he's already conquered the mind of his opponent. Now, of course, any good warrior or any good fighter knows this. And I think if you want to understand spirituality, try getting hit in the face and then still breathing, right? I don't know if anybody's been in a fight or anything like that. I'm not saying you need to get in a fight. You know, this isn't a fight club. But I'm saying that to get hit and to stay breathing is very spiritual experience. And if you don't believe me, then you obviously haven't been in a fight before. And so also, uh, you know, in regards to what Hitler is saying here, God help us if victory does not reward our arms on the very first day. And he's also, he's also, of course, speaking from a nationalistic perspective. A lot of people don't understand this, that Hitler was he wasn't just about Nazis. He was very nationalist. Like he wanted to rebuild the, the idea of the German strength that was completely deteriorated after world war one. And I don't think a lot of people understand studying war is so important to understanding who we are. You know, Jordan Peterson once said that, you know, read history like it's about you. And I thought that was just a brilliant way to put how how we need to learn about these things is because if you think that you in Auschwitz, like if you were not, like if you were in Germany and you were a German and you were a Nazi, 
or you were you think that you wouldn't be a Nazi, you're probably wrong that if you if you think that you're not going to be that. Do you think like how how realistic do you think it would be to be in that place where you're in extreme poverty? Think about the time, the economic time of Germany in this period of like Mein Kampf was written in 1925 and Hitler finished it in prison or at least he started writing it in prison. And he was he was very I mean, he, this guy was a very angry person. Right. And uh, nobody when you are completely deprived of your survival needs of food or shelter or water, your emotions go into overdrive like you you don't think about anything you are just you you will do anything to get that sustenance right so you have to really think about like what it would have been like to live in germany at this time and to think that you wouldn't become a nazi because you know maybe you're starving and the only way that you can become not or the only way that you can be not starving and to feed your family is to become a Nazi member. You're likely going to take that deal if you don't know much else of what's going on in the world. There's not a lot like, yeah, the technology is different at this time period as well. But like, I mean, it was only like a 100 like it was literally like a 100 years ago and technology has changed a lot, but it really isn't all too different. So. Keep that in mind as well. The The second part that I want to read from this is from uh, a section and a chapter called Propaganda and Organization. And so he's really talking about here just how to get people to be propagandized. And the way to do that is to, well, I'll just read what he says. He says, the first task of propaganda is to win the people for subsequent organization. The first task of organization is to win men for the continuation of propaganda. The second task of propaganda is the disruption of the existing state of affairs and the permeation of the state of affairs with the new doctrine, while the second task of organization must be the struggle for power, thus to achieve the final success of the doctrine. So, this can be applied not just in a nation. Think about it from the individual to individual. Think about it from a lot of these people that are watching from a narcissist perspective. The narcissist wants to win and to get, think about propaganda in this case as narcissistic supply. So, in order to get narcissistic supply, the narcissist has to win multiple people over for the actual like uh, for the actual supply, right? And you do that by winning the continuation of the image that they're trying to project and they're trying to implant in you. The second task of narcissistic supply is the disruption of the existing state of affairs. So think about it this way. It's the disruption of your nervous system. It's the disruption of your understanding of reality. And then the permeation of the state of affairs with the new doctrine. The new doctrine in this case is making sure the narcissist is always right and can never be wrong. And you even challenging that should make you feel very guilty and shameful. And then the second task of the organization must also be in the struggle for power. Remember, the narcissist wants to control you. And the only way that they cannot is when you are able to control your own emotions. So thus, to achieve the final success of the doctrine is the struggle for power. So, if you can control your emotions, you will cease to give anybody narcissistic supply. That's a pretty interesting concept, isn't it? And it's a pretty encouraging one, too. So how do you control your emotions? Learn about what the narcissist is trying to do. Learn about these, the ways and the minds of how they operate. 
this is a much deeper spiritual problem and a spiritual endeavor than most people realize. And I think anybody that talks about narcissism that doesn't talk about like the deeper spiritual meaning of it, you shouldn't listen to them. And uh, the reason being is because there's just so much to go into the top topic and there's so much to learn about this topic. And there's so much to be educated on about this topic and to keep it surface level is almost a disservice to your own education, which is exactly why I'm doing this video right now is because at the university, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? And and you don't know what you don't know. So how are you supposed to know how to know what you don't know? <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, that that's I think that's the best way to put it. Is uh so so you have to like always be curious, I would say as well. But in controlling your emotions, make sure you're getting enough sleep, first of all. Make sure you're getting enough nutrition, sunlight, exercise, the very basic things. And meditation as well. Uh, th those will also help. Uh, these things combined will make sure that your nervous system is operating at a level that is optimal for your biology. And only you really know what that's going to be looking like down the road. But you also have to remember that you're still on the road. And yeah, it might be down the road is where you might see those results. But if you don't start now, where are you going to be going? So it's good to understand where you are now and to accept where you are now and sometimes controlling your emotions doesn't always mean expressing them sometime now i'm not saying you shouldn't express your feelings when you want to express it however learn when it is appropriate and how it's appropriate to have some situational awareness of when it's a good time to Express your emotions. And also remember that emotions are our energy. And to be able to be a vessel for that emotion rather than to let the emotion control you and use you as a vessel is the difference. Like a lot of people nowadays, oh, like a lot of these people say, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like this. I, I feel as though it's like, stop saying I feel when the situation is about thinking. You're, you're, you're telling yourself lies in doing that. I was at the barbershop earlier and one of the, the people there that were talking was talking about, I feel I, I feel like in this video game and they, they went on about this video game and I was thinking like, well, number one, like, why are you, why are you talking about feelings in video games? Like you're, you're putting all, I just, look, if you play video games, that's great. If you want to play video games, that's fine. I think there's a time and place for video games. Probably not every day. Probably not even once a week. Like I would personally, I, I play video games. I used to play video games every day. And it wasn't until the last year and a half, two years is when I really started to like drift away from that and realize that like it was kind of just a time waster. A lot of the times like watching TV is a time waster unless you're getting some kind of information about it or trying to understand like the mythology and the story behind it. I think we just waste a lot of time. Like there was another conversation talking about, I feel like this TV show is better than that one. It's like, well, I know this is kind of like a silly comparison, but like, who cares? Like who, who, who really cares about what TV show you feel like is better and why, like why you feel that way? 
it's just a waste of feelings, to be honest. Like, it's just a waste of energy. Because feelings, like I said, are energy. And so how do you gain control over your emotions? You recognize when you're actually feeling the emotion and you name it. So for example, and, and you name it like where you feel it in your body as well. Now, I know a lot of people, especially on this channel, might be like considered as uh, highly sensitive people. And I don't really like that saying like I, I, I honestly, I think highly sensitive people are actually the most quote unquote normal. Again, I don't believe anybody's normal, but like I don't think the normal person exists. But if there was a normality, I would have to say that like empathy for other people and maintaining healthy relationships and understanding the situation that you're in through mindfulness and awareness and preventing any kind of outbursts of emotion that are just unnecessary and to remain stoic. This is another thing I think we need more of in our society is stoicism. Man, people, uh, people can be, and, and you have to have like a, a kind of coldness, right? Like, cause there is a coolness of love in stoicism, but the stoicism itself is actually quite like sturdy and, 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 and hard as steel at times because it's very rational and it's hard for people to be rational. I understand it took me a long time to get to this point of like being able to separate my feelings from my thoughts because sometimes they can seem like they're a combination, but we as human beings have to learn when we're actually like letting our feelings control our, our body. Like again, is the emotion using you as a vessel or are you using the emotion as a vessel? Because emotion, human emotion is perhaps the most powerful force on this planet. And if you don't understand how to control it or express it properly and name it within yourself, you're likely going to experience a lot of anxiety or a lot of depressive like thoughts and you likely just have a lot of demons that you haven't faced. So that's why it's super important to study these kind of like demonic characters like Hitler is to understand what not to do. And because like Carl Jung said, understanding what not to do is at least an increase of knowledge of where you're trying to go. So with that being said, I hope this message was informative and till next time, peace be with you.